Hello and welcome to the stream. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland and I am doing some flutter. Um, I had uh, streamed previously about uh, an app that I was building that uh, will help manage expenses between two persons, two groups or two parties, whatever, uh, however you want to call that, but only two, two people. Uh, but uh, that's not what we're going to do on this stream. Um, the, the person for who I build those apps has uh, changed their priorities and I was building another app for them. And this second app is now um, the priority, so that's what I'm going to switch to. Uh, this uh, this app is going to help them manage their one-person childcare business. So they're looking after children uh, after school. And so they have to keep track of how many hours they uh, looked after the, the children and, uh, and if the children uh, had uh, lunch or, uh, or dinner, uh, if they stayed overnight, etc, etc. So I have built an app for that and the app is now on the App Store. Well, it's in the um, test flight uh, phase right now. It's being tested because it's far from being finished, but that way I can send the app to them and they can test it. Um, it's being approved for um, the Play Store also, so it's going to be available on Android. Uh, and so they, they came back to me with some... Uh, bug uh, reports and some improvements they would like to see in this uh, in this first screen really it's uh, only the the first screen so i'm going to switch to the uh, dev view uh, and that's the phone i'm going to once again use a real phone because they have some bugs that only appear on phones and we are going to get started uh, Right, so that's the translation part, so we don't need that right now. Uh, well, let's run the app and see what we've got. Uh, it's going to run on the on the phone, yes. It's going to build and run on the phone. Uh, when it does that, um, let me just report on the uh, App Store process. Uh, so, it was surprisingly easy to uh, send the app. I had previously done iPhone apps using Xcode and Swift, and it was a uh, it was uh, always a problem to send the app. Well, I had problem. I don't know, but maybe because I don't do uh, too many apps, but it al always something was missing or was not right or stuff like that. But with Flutter, I just built the archived, signed it, and sent it to the the store and uh, it was it was okay now i'm sure it won't pass the validation if i was to validate it right now because i'm missing the icon but uh, my client <laughs> is uh, is doing the icon um, so they're doing <laughs> they're doing some some work but uh yeah it was not rejected at all and it was uh, i was able to send that to test flight Okay, so that's the app. Uh, as you can see, the app is in French right now, and I'm going to leave it like that because I'm testing my translations. But if I go to the settings on this phone, if I can find it, well, I won't, I won't do that. But um, as soon as you change the language on the phone, then it will um, automatically switch from French to English. But let's keep that in French right now. And so one bug we have is that when I press the plus button and then if I choose like preschool and then click on the date field, the birth date for the child and I select a pick a date. And now we have lost the preschool selection so I need to fix that also um, the please select an option is not in French and it's not aligned 
on the on the right on the left so i want to fix that too if i can let's see where where are we we are going to be somewhere in the folder form thing and so that's that Boolean boolean form field so why why are we losing the value oh i know suddenly i just realized that that we set the state. Uh, no, that's the field, but that's where I use it. And I only. I don't set the state, even on unsave. So that's not unsave that I want. I want some unchange. Unpress steady change. Steady change. Uh, where do I call? Where do I call unsaved? Unsaved? Oh, unsaved is passed as super. The super, super probably doesn't have an unchange because it's a custom form field. So I need to do some magic because the state here changed, but the state steady change it's a state it's only the state of the of this thing so I need to call hmm I need to change that to unchanged and that does not exist and unsaved is required why is it required I don't want that to be required so how about I change that to unchanged no, I don't want to pass that here, but I want to say unpressed, steady change, unchanged. Uh, true. And then done here, unchanged false. Okay. And now that should be that should be that I need to set state. Here. Let's have a look. So now if I press preschool and go to the birth date and change that, click OK and I haven't lost preschool status. That's great. Awesome. So that's one bug fixed. Uh First name, Alice. No, no, that's the, another another bug I need to fix. That when I click on the first name field or any text field, actually, I would like to have the caps on, and then it, that it would that it switches back to lowercase letters, lowercase letters. But the thing is, I don't lose the the preschool status yes and there and there too yeah and if I, uh, save and then edit it's still there and then save that for kindergarten and that's that's all good okay let's see if i can fix the keyboard thing I don't know how I can do that, but there's probably a keyboard type for that. I will have a look at the documentation. So we are we are in every text field, right? Uh, so let's start with the first one. Single scroll child first name. Let's see. This is a text form field and do we have a keyboard type? And the keyboard type is actually a text input type. So text input type. And what do we have in text input type? Probably a constant though. 
number with options. That's not what we want. Uh, 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 uh. Visible password. Request a keyboard with ready access to both letter and number. Name, this name. Name, optimize for a person's name. On iOS, request the name phone pal, keyboard, a keyboard optimized for answering a person's name or phone number. Does not support auto capitalization. Huh. So, which one do I want? Do I want name or do I want auto capitalization? Capitalization. Only supports text keyboards, other keyboard type will ignore this configuration. Uh, I'm not sure that's what I want. I don't want every word to be every word to be capitalized. By default it's set to none. Uh-huh. Words defaults to uppercase keyboard or the first letter of each word. Eh. Sentences, that's what I want. Default to an uppercase keyboard for the first letter of each sentence. That's what I want. So text capitalization dot sentences. Probably. So. So, text capitalization, text capitalization dot sentences. And I'm going to copy that because I pretty much want that everywhere. Child first name, child last name. Uh, there. Uh, what else? Where else do I want that? Uh, parents name. Parents full name. Here. Uh, text from field, yes, and also probably address. Although I'm curious as to what what the address text uh, keyboard type could be. So let's find let's find the address uh, here, and let's say keyboard type equals type. Uh, your type is an text input type. Text input type point that point that street address. Let's see what that does. Okay, so I now have this thing, and this is a street address. I don't really see any difference, but okay. So now if I okay. Click here. Yes. Snow white. And Prince Charming. Okay, and so if I go there, and now, yes, it's capitalized. Uh, that's not what I wanted to type. I want to type this. That's capitalized. That is also capitalized. Oh, I don't know how to say that, but that's how I'm going to say it. And Alice was born in, eh, let's say, 22, 207 and in the 10th of October. Right. So the, the, that format is um, Swiss format right now. Uh, I need to try and fix that and then address. I don't know what what this keyboard means, but okay, let's uh, let's say this is okay. I'm going to let that like that and then change the text capitalization to text capitalization. Uh, sentences, right? And then I decide 
that there was a keyboard text type name. Yes. And uh, optimize for a person's name. Well, I'm okay with that. My guess is first name and last name should be also keyboard type name because they are names. Right. So that should fix the first two bugs. I, I am a bad programmer. I haven't entered the bugs in my uh, bug, bug uh, on GitHub on the issue. But, well, you know, we can't do everything properly. And if I change the address now, and I go, I don't know where they live, where can they live? Uh, 42 Sesame Street. Uh, ah, so that keyboard doesn't allow me to go to go one line down. Okay, I want to be able to enter multiple lines, so let's remove that and try again. And so the address is ah yeah now I can. So I leave uh, a little bit like that. Says me straight. Nine zero two one zero. Nine zero two one zero. Los Angeles. Was it Hollywood? Is Hollywood a act an actual city or is it just a, an area of Los Angeles? So there's that. What did I have? I have the I have the bug reports on my iPhone. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, yes. So there was another bug with the text field, and uh, that's here in the edit form, which was that I was not able to put my cursor in the middle to stuff so now I now I can do that on the Android phone hopefully I will be able to do that on the iPhone uh, can I do that yeah so I can do that on on the Android phone here so I will leave that to the next test flight version okay uh, mm. So now we have a a feature request. So we need to add something where we can type the allergies, which is pretty important when you're looking after children to know if they are, are allergic to something. And on the parent side, the phone number, and then some kind of MISC data. All right. Uh, Let's do that. Uh, let's go back to the form on the phone. Where are we going to add the allergies? I, I'm going to say below the buttons. Below the buttons. So if we go back to our uh, form. Uh, surprise wrench is really not... Well, it is. It is well named because whether the child is in preschool or kindergarten, kindergarten that changes the price for the meal if they have lunch or not but hmm, I'm going to change this function and go to preschool status which is not entirely exact either but hey Uh, okay, so now we need to add a field for allerg allergies. Allergies. And we're going to pass the i18 end object that will help us um, translate the app. Um, let's open a Google Doc. A Google Doc. 
<laughs> hey Google uh, search and we want to I want to look at how does how do you write allergies in English? In English. Allergies in English. There's a service for that. From French to English. Allergy. And that's, well, that's easy. That's the exact same word. But that's, there are two L's. Okay. So what are those allergies? Uh, go away, Google Assistant. I didn't ask you to appear. Uh, and then I want to write a function, uh, same as this one, as those ones. And so there are. They're going to return padding, and they take a child care localizations i18n as a parameter. And we're going to return, return. Well, I'm going to copy and paste because that's what I do best. And this, uh, this also, and also this. Oopsie. So that's what I'm going to do here. Here, and the expanded will be closed. And then that, and then that. And then that. And there we go. Now, expanded needs a child. So let's give it a child. And that's going to be a container for the moment. Yes, and that is working. Where's my app? I don't know. It's gone. It's here. And it's going to reset. Yes. All right. Uh, and in that, instead of a container, uh, here, I'm going to add a text field. So, a text form field. There we go. Copy that. That's the child of the... Oh, I don't need the expanded. Yes. Uh, yes, I... What did I do? What did I do? Oh. I copied the wrong thing. Yes. What I want is something like the child last name. So let's uh, do that all over again. Because that's exactly that that I want. Yes. Uh, so, uh, insert let text in text form field. Input type name. Mm, no. Yes, uh, and then decoration, yes, but that's going to be allergies. The initial value will be folder allergies and unchange folder allergies equals value. Now we have a problem because we haven't, we haven't, uh, uh, <laughs> that's not where it's supposed to be. That's why we have a problem. Uh, we need to put that inside the class so it can access the underscore folder instance variable. And then we need to define allergies in said folder. So the folder is here. We're going to have a string that is going to be optional because not all children have allergies. Okay, so this can be null, which means when we build an empty folder, we don't need to initialize allergies because it's going to be null. However, when we clone a folder, we need to set the allergies field to whatever it was uh, in the original object. When we merge an object into this, or when we merge this object into another one, then we clone the other and we only need to merge the ID, well, retain the ID. Now, 
when we are going to read and save the subject. We're going to need something else, which means we have to go to our database util here. And then we need to upgrade the database. If version equals equals four. And that noise was my iPhone. Okay, uh, await uh, db dot execute and uh, what are we going to execute? We are going to execute an alter table folder, add allergies, and that's going to be a text. Okay, and we need a semicolon here, and now we need to create uh, when we when we open the database, we need to go to version 4, which means it's going to update nicely to version 4. Now, we need to change this. So, here, when we read something from the database, that's going to be the allergies column. And we can just set it like that because it's a string but it doesn't know that, so we need to tell it that it's a string with a... It's actually an optional string, all right? And when we map that object to the database, we can do the uh, opposite operation, which means in the allergies column, we're going to store the allergies property, and since it's an optional string, it should, it should work in theory. Right, uh, let's test that theory. And so, let's say that Alice is allergic to peanuts and save that. And then go back to that and it didn't work. Why am I not surprised? Um, I, oh, look at that. Look at that. No such column allergies. Update folder set. Uh, which means it probably didn't restart the app properly and then it did not update the database. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let's change that. Okay, we didn't have any error. Uh, Okay, let's write peanuts again and save. We didn't get any error message, which is fun and fine. And then change that and look at that. Alice is now allergic to peanuts. Okay, this message here is some debug message I have uh, added to my app that tells me that this world does not exist in my translation files, so let's add them. So I'm not using Flutter's uh, built-in internationalization process, um, feature because I find it very... I don't know, I don't really like it. And I am used to uh, get text, GNU get text and with PoEdit or... Well, I am actually not using PoEdit, I'm doing that by hand, but... I like this better. I think if if someone if someone is going to translate my app, then it will be a lot easier to just give them the the POT file and say, okay, go translate that in your language, and then I will I will just uh, add the um, the translation to the to the app and enable that language for the app, and that should be great. Right, hot reload, and now we shouldn't have any messages about uh, allergies. So save and edit, and there we go. No more message in the console. Right, so the child can now be allergic to something, and we can write that. But we also, well, I was also told that in the main screen, on the main screen, 
instead of writing the address of the parents, I should probably put the allergies. Because when someone is allergic to something, you want to know that very quickly. Uh, you don't want to have to go through two, three, four screens uh, to find if they are indeed allergic to something and you forgot. Or if someone, if you ask someone to check on your phone, you don't want them to, you don't want to have to explain to them, well, click on this menu and then click there and click there. So on the main screen, uh, which is the home homepage, uh, I will, I will remove the address. Um, uh, I also just noticed that my stream element boat boat is no longer in the channel apparently. Uh, let's uh, see if I can quickly fix that. I'm not sure I can, but if I can, I will try. Uh, Or, or are they, actually? Let me check that. Uh, they're probably not there. So, well, I guess I can see that later. Do do. Oh well, I'm uh, okay. So let's do that and go there. Do, 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 do. There, not there. Uh, should I? Oh, dashboard. That's it. And then we do that and do that. And then refresh that. Is it there now? It says it's there, but I don't see it. I don't know. I will have a look later. Okay. Anyway. Uh, we should remove the address from the home screen and add the uh, the allergies. So folder tile, subtitle, and that's gonna be the allergies. And that's not working because because allergies can be nil. Okay. So, well, it's going to be that or that. So let's see. Yes. Mm, how can I? It, it's a bit harsh just to have that. So, so we're, doing, we're going to do that. Allergies is not null. Then we will write uh known allergies and then that's gonna be the of index dot allergies otherwise we print no no known allergies and that's this Uh, huh. So that's that and that and that's that here and that and that should do it. Why? It does not evaluate to a function. Really? Yes, really. That's that T to get the message, the text. And then the allergies, and then if not, we need to have that i18n.t, and we get that. There we go. 
Now we have no knowledge is peanuts, and if we create another folder, another child, uh, that's not what I want to do. Well, yes, that is. I'm going just to remove that and save. And now no knowledge is it's not working because it's no longer nil. It's probably empty now. Okay, does Flutter have something like string that is new or empty? No, it doesn't. So we need to check that. Uh, now we're going to do this. As allergies equals that. It needs to be both not null and not empty. Okay. And because it's not null, then we can force it and go through the null check. But now it says what well, the expression doesn't evaluate to a function. Uh, what? No, it's not a function, it's a property. It is a property. So now we know that now we have a boolean and that boolean can be used uh, here. Actually, uh, yes. As allergies. If the if true, then that's going to be a text with non allergy, uh, non allergies, and then the allergies. Otherwise, it's going to be a text, and we're going to use no known allergies. Okay, cool. No known allergies, right? And now if we go back to that. Why is it? Why is it uh, doing that? Is it, is it my phone or did I mess up something? No knowledge is peanuts, okay. I have messed something up, I think. It should not be doing that. It's refreshing the screen like like crazy. But it could be, it could be normal. I don't know. That's... I'll see later. Okay, uh, let's go to here. And we've got... We've got this message that we need to add here. Okay, and we know that... We also have... No known... Allergies. Is it allergy or no known allergy? Huh. What does Google say? No, 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 no. No known allergies. Okay. So plural. No known allergies. Non allergies. Okay, uh, same in English. So you may have noticed that I just put that in the English uh, file, but I don't translate anything because I don't have to. And by default, it will take the the mess the, the the template message. Pas d'allergie connue. 
Allergie connue. There we go. And a quick fast reload. Should give us a French version of that. That's cool. Okay. And save that. Ah, I'm I am disappointed. No. Oh. That's because I'm stupid. That's what I want, and that is not what I have typed here. Right. And that should be better once I reload that. Yes, no known allergies. Great. Now, I have been asked to add a phone number. Hmm. Uh, let me see something. Oh, okay. Um. Let's see. I have been asked to add the parents' phone number. Yes, parents' phone number. Right. Let's go to the do, 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 do phone folder. And I'm going to remove that. I want the parents' phone number. And so that's going to be below, below the, the address. Uh, so let's add phone number. Uh, my guess. My guess is it's going to be like a regular text field. So let's take the this one. Uh, except we are going to make that a phone number keyboard, if that exists. That's going to be a phone number. Okay. Phone number. Okay, we're going to set that to phone number or phone. Well, that's the phone number. Phone number. Okay, that doesn't exist yet. So let's see. Do we have a um, phone? Yes, keep input type phone. Great. Now, folder doesn't contain any string. So that's optional too. Is it optional? Yeah, it needs to be optional. Huh. So it needs to be... Yes, because they don't necessarily have all the information at once when they, get the, the, when they create the folder first. So let's make that... An optional field. We just need to clone it. Okay. And we're going to have to add that to the database at some point. Let's just uh, add that to the translation right now. Okay. Uh, tuck, tuck, and here, and that's gonna be very fun. Okay, let's reload those translations, and we should see. We should have seen. Oh, there we go. Ah, problem. Uh, I'm trying to scroll the. The form, but it's not scrolling because it's probably not inside a, a single single child scrolling window or widget or whatever it's called. So the form, it's a scaffold. It has an app bar, uh, and the body of that, yes, the body of that is a single child scroll view. 
Why doesn't it scroll? Oh, because it doesn't have to. It's right at the limit, but it's going to scroll later on when we add the last field. Okay, so what kind of keyboard do we get when we do that? Nice. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Cool. And it's optimized for phones because you can have the plus 55. Yes. So, yeah, I'm, I'm now talking to the big companies who make apps on our phones. You've just saw how easy it is to make a text field behave properly for a phone number. So you have absolutely no excuse to not use that. And how many times do I like, you know, shout on my phone when I use uh, an, uh, an official app from a big company and I, I have to type my phone number. And when I type on the field, the regular keyboard pops up. It's one, one thing, one, not even one line of code to, to force the phone to use a appropriate keyboard. Same thing for the password, same thing for lots of stuff. So, yeah, no excuses. No excuses. You should get a bad rating on, on any app stores for not using the proper keyboards. But anyway, I am ranting once again. Uh, so we, we've got the phone. We need to upgrade the database now. So that's going to be in our database util code which is there and so that's gonna be for version 5 at some point I will consolidate everything but while I'm developing this app I'm still doing going to do that each time I need to update the the schema so that's gonna be alt table folder add and that's phone number and that's a text. There we go. I need to reload the app. Hot restart. And not just reload. Hot restart. There we go. Now we go to the folder dot dot function. And when we read from the database, then we read the phone number. It comes from the phone number column. And it's an option string. And then we do the opposite over here. Uh, when we save that, we save to the phone number column. And we save the phone number property, which is a, an optional string. And that's OK. Everything is fine. Can I do that? No. Nah, that would have been too easy. OK. So we should be able to store and retrieve phone number now in this folder. Let's see. So phone number is plus 41, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Save. Save. We add an error. Uh, no such column phone number. Did I screw up? Phone number. No, so I guess it didn't restart properly. But let's restart once again. Sync files, hot reload, the, all the good stuff. Okay. It still reads the the data from the database though, so... Nope, we've got an... Oh! <laughs> yes. So, now in the database util thingy, I need to tell the open database function that we are on... that we want to open version 5. And now we need to hot reload this thing. Hot restart. So that it comes back. You know, that's a singleton, so it's uh, it's not reinitialized on reloads. 
Okay, change that. Uh, let's go to... Well, let's add some allergies. And then let's change the phone number. Plus 41. Uh, to 34567. And save. And no error this time on the console. And there we go. We have our phone number. Okay. Let's see. Can we... Can we... Can we have an, an icon and when we press that icon, we get a phone, the phone app pop up. Flutter, flutter. Uh, click on phone number to start call. Can we do that? How to make a phone call from a flutter app. Well, the launch method from URL launcher package. Here's the complete complete code. Also, you can import URL launcher that as URL launcher and then use the URL launcher dot launch phone number. Be sure to include an entry for it in the pubspec YAML in the dependency section. And how are you using that in the code? My problem is that URL launcher can't be found. You need to add dependency, blah, blah, blah. I am getting missing plugin exception. Oops, fake. Well, why don't we try that? I don't have a SIM card in this phone, so that's not going to go anywhere. But let's try. So that's URL launcher. Okay. Now I have discovered that all those those recommendations add these to pub spec and stuff like that. That that never works. Because of the latest version of those things. So I would rather ra rather <laughs> do letter pub get URL underscore launcher. And then it will do the work for me. So now in my pub spec YAML, I should have a proper URL launcher. Well, I sh I, um, that that didn't work really. Ah, that's pub add URL launcher. Let's add that, and now it did download stuff, yes. And now we have URL, URL launcher in the pubspec file. Great, okay. So, where will I put that icon? I will put that icon in the not in there in on the home screen on the home page there in the folder tile which is a list tile it has a trailing and now it's gonna have a leading and so the leading it's gonna be it's gonna be it's a widget so an icon is an icon a widget i think so Icons dot phone, yeah, and it, it wants that to be a const because it's constant. All right, but in fact, what I want is not necessarily an icon, but it's probably an icon button. And then it says that a value of type null can't be assigned to a parameter of type widget. Oh. Why? It's not new. Oh, it can't be const, probably. Icon, icon button. But, ah, icon button. It needs an icon. Oopsie. It needs an icon property. Icon, icons phone. Okay, it needs an unpressed 
property, which is the handler. Um, that's not going to work. So icon of icon spawn. Okay. Uh, const. Unpressed. Unpressed. Unpressed doesn't take anything, but we can use the URL launcher thingy. Launch. So launch, launch with an auto import, and then we're going to launch what? We're going to launch tell column slash slash, and we need the data index dot phone number. We're going to put an exclamation mark here. And it is not happy. Why? Because it uh, forgot a curly brace here. And we're going to protect that with if that different of oh, different than null. And we're going to do that. Right. Um Let's see what happens if I click on this thing. Nothing happens, which is really disappointing. It is really disappointing. Can this phone even, you know, be used as a phone? <laughs> uh, it's not my main phone. It's uh, a phone I got for my daughter. Well, apparently it can. And I have lots of calls. But then that doesn't work. Do we have some... Oh, we do! We do have some messages. So let's see. When I click on that, it says another exception. Missing plugin exception. No implementation found for method launch on channel plugins. On channel plugins that flutter that are that you are a launcher. Ah, maybe I should read the doc. Maybe I should read the doc. What does the doc says? A flutter plugin for launching a URL supports iOS, Android, web, Windows, macOS, and Linux. To use this plugin, add URL launcher. This dinner. okay. iOS add any URL skimmed passed to can launch as okay for example uh, okay android starting from api 30 android requires package visibility configuration in your android manifest xml otherwise can launch will return false So that's what I would, I would need, I guess. Make a phone call. Telephone. Yes. URL schemes are only supported if there are apps installed on the device that can support them. For example, iOS simulator don't have a default email or phone apps installed, so can't can't open tell or mail to links. Okay. So that's probably that what I need that, that that I need and that's going to the Android manifest XML. Okay, let's see. Where's the, where is Android manifest.xml? Probably somewhere around uh, for her. Where is the Android manifest.xml? Uh, oh no, that's I'm looking inside the files here. I don't want to do that. What I want is look for Android manifest. 
Un druid manifest. Uh... There's no file called Android Manifest. Oh well, maybe it's an oldest old thing. Let's see if I can find queries in there. No, I can't. Oh. See Android documentation. Oh, maybe it's after I installed. Tupinuriel. Use an intent that contains the action view intent. This looks pretty complex. So I'm not going to implement that right now. I'm going to leave the icon and I'm going to leave with the error message. Let's, uh, let's see. What do I want to do now? Uh, I, I want to add the miscellaneous uh, field at the bottom of the form. That's the last part that I was asked to implement. So let's do that. Uh, here we're going to add misc. Okay, uh, and that's going to be a text field like the address, except for the keyboard type. Mm, I missed the address. Parents for name, address. Yes, that's it. Let's copy that. Go somewhere here. And add that here. Okay. And that is going to be misc. And that's going to be a text form field, max line. Mm. I'm going to say three because we want to put, for example, uh, the doctor's name and address and stuff like that. Let's say four, it's okay. It doesn't matter really. And those are going to be misc information. And that's going to be that to misc. Yes. Okay. Uh, we need to add that to the folder. Otherwise, it's not going to compile. That's going to be an optional string. Same as usual. Same old stuff. Misc equals other.misc. Okay. And. <clears throat> And then database will do that later. Uh, okay, misc. So we added misc. Uh, misc information. misc information and we'll add that to the english file for consistency and then to the french file and that's gonna be information information diverse okay and let's see if we have that it's there but but the the hint is not where I want it to be. Not where I want it to be. Not really, anyway. Um, how do I do that? I have no clue. I have no clue. Let's see. Let's go to our uh, our folder form. 
And so we have a decoration, icon, level text, initial value. So that's the label. The label is in the middle. Do we have something for the label? Label style, align label, align label with a hint. Let's say yes, oh, true. And what do we have now? Hmm. It's still there. It's it, it might be at the right place though. When I click on that, it goes up, up there. Um, yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's at the right place. Okay. Well, I don't know if this was useful. Let's have a look. Yes, it was useful. So that's without and that I'm going to save that and that is with. So it's good. Great. Uh, database now. We need to change the database. Um, where is the database? Database utils, that's here. Um, we need a version six of the database. If version equals equals six, then await the B. Okay, uh, that's gonna be add misc, and that's gonna be disk text. Okay, and now in the folder, oops, we also need to open database version 6. And then in the folder, same old thing, misc equals row of misc as string, and then when we save, we save misc misc there we go we should now be able to add miscellaneous information okay let's go there and say doctor don't try to autocorrect me doctor who <laughs> And we want that to be, I don't know, the number plus 41, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Dave? No error in the console. So let's change that. And there we go. We have the MISC information implemented. Okay. So really, the only thing that's left to do that uh, has been requested as a nice to have is the uh, ability to uh, open a telephone, uh, the telephone app, and call the the parents. I'm going to have a look at that just uh, just to make sure that I, ref that, uh, I can do that or not. Let's see. The launch method takes a string argument containing a URL. This URL can be formatted and blah, 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 blah. So that's the Android developer. I don't want that. I would like something in, in Flutter. Flutter, open, tell URLs. How can I dial the phone from Flutter? But that's not typically to interact with the underlying platform. You have to write platform specific code and communicate with the same using platform channels. However, Flutter provides some point of integration with the platform out of the box. To dial the phone, for instance, you can use the URL launcher.launch API with the tell scheme to dial the phone. Something like URL launcher.launch tell phone number should work fine on all platforms. 
Do note that this will not work in the simulator, so make sure you are using an actual device to test this. Do, 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 do. I'm going to type the the error message. Maybe we can uh, missing plugin extension. Let's type that in in our search and see what we can do. If you are if you are using Hot Restart or Hot Reload, it won't do the trick since Flutter has to inject plugin dependency into the platform specific part of your app. Hot Restart, Hot Reload is not enough to trigger the injection. Ah. Now we know. We need to stop the app and start it again. And hopefully, we will see the phone app pop up. And if not, well, it's not a big deal. But then I could, I guess I could write the phone number. Maybe I can copy that and can paste that on the, well, I don't think we can paste the phone number. But uh, let's see. Let's see. It's installing. Installing, building, and stuff like that. And it should be running. Okay. Let's click on that icon. Ooh, look at that. Do I want to open that with my phone or with Skype? Let's say phone. I don't... No, let's not say phone, we'll just... Right, now let's uh, change that. Yes, okay, so it's a Swiss number, that's okay. And it's probably a fake number, so let's see what happened. I want to open that, uh, yeah, always. Okay, so the phone number is preset and I can just call and it works. It's awesome, it's awesome. Well, I just killed my app, I guess. Now I killed the phone for now. Okay, so now if I click there, it opens the phone app. Because I said always last time I clicked there. That's uh, that's great. Okay, so we've got that. I, I will... Now we'll leave it like that. I think it's okay. I just need to protect against uh, not having a phone number. Because, because it won't work. Well, it will work, I guess. We'll open the phone app with the blank phone number. Let's try. Ooh, don't, don't, don't go, don't go landscape on me. Let's remove this phone number. And now, if I click on the phone app. It's going to just open the phone app. That's okay. That's okay. Although, although I would rather have no phone number displayed or uh, grayed out or yeah. Let's see. Uh, it's on the home page. And the leading is an icon button. Do we have like style or something? Uh, decoration. Uh, there's a disabled color. So do we, uh, if there is a disabled color, I should be able to disable the enable feedback. Isn't that true by default? Uh, that's not my one. 
uh, disabled color it will use oh if unpressed oh so if i remove the unpress handler when i don't have a phone number but how do i do that i think i recall some fancy syntax in dart where i can go if that different of uh, different from null then no I know there's a syntax somewhere. That syntax add uh, property if condition, if statement. Why not? Not nullable variable, null aware operator, no. Conditional property access, no. Collection literals, no. Arrow syntax, no. Cascades, no. 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 Getters and setters, no. Optional name parameters, no. Well, I'm um, initializers list, no. Name constructors, no. Factory constructors, no. Redirecting constructors, no. Cons constructors, no. Hmm. That's not what I'm looking for. Use an immediate anonymous function. If true, return that, return that. Use if or for statement or spread operators in collection. No. No. I want to set this property if. I. Well, I just, I just, I guess, I guess I can do this like that. I can do this like that. Uh, on press equals. Uh, do we have a phone number? Then that. Else null. That should, that should have worked. Uh, phone number different from new and then there we go okay so we have a phone number we don't have a phone number it's gray is it great no it's not gray so that didn't work oh again the phone number came back from the database and it's now not null but it's empty so let's do that has phone number that's phone number different of null and phone number is not empty 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 no h as phone number then that else well i guess if has phone number is true then we don't have to 
check for anything there. That should work. That will work. That does work. So now we have a disabled... Oh, but... Uh, but now if I click there, it opens that because... Uh, yes, that's a problem. That's a problem. So the previous solution was better. So that, and then that, and then that. If has a number, then do that. And if you don't have a phone number, then do nothing. Okay. Maybe I can change the icon style. Color. Okay, let's see. Uh... I've seen something here which was disabled color. That wasn't on the leading, I guess. Uh, I can disable. And that uses theme the disabled color. Okay, we're going to do that. So color. Is going to be has phone number. If yes, then T and I don't have the theme. I can pass the theme. I need, uh, well, I can pass the theme to to the builder. So body folder style P T is the theme. And then in the folder tile function, I can I can add a variable T, which is the th theme, current theme. And so there is supposed to be, but uh, I must be missing something. The so theme is theme data. Okay. And what? Oh, that's a theme. Ah. Theme dot. How do I get the theme data from a theme? Uh, I guess data then. That's theme, theme data. Yes. And uh, disabled color. Otherwise, null. Which I believe is the default value for the color. Now, has phone number. is an invalid constant. Is it really? Is it really? Why would it be an invalid constant? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It is an invalid constant because we told Plutter that this was a constant and it is no longer a constant because it changes. So what do we have? It's going to be a little bit hard on stream to see, I guess. But this looks like something that is gray. And if I add a phone number, then this looked like something that is also gray. That's not... Uh, that's not good. Uh, why? Why? Why is there a phone here? There's a phone in the margin. Oh, that's the... Probably the, the icon. Yes. They chose me whatever icon this uh, this represents. That's neat. Okay, let's 
put a breakpoint here. And see what that does. Am I debugging or am I running or am I doing nothing special? I'm not doing anything special, I'm I guess. So I'm going to stop that and press F5. And it says build error. Ah that's why. Uh the argument type theme that I cannot be assigned to the parameter. Why? T is Oh, T is a theme da data, so that's me doing, not 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 looking at what I did previously. So now I don't need to do that, and that's why I didn't see any change. That's because it didn't actually restart the app because there was an error. Okay, let's uh, try that again and run this application on the phone. See if we uh, can spot difference in color between a tile that has has a phone number and one that doesn't. It should be subtle though. Come on, come on. Okay. So it's gray and it doesn't do anything. Uh, do we have an error? No, we don't. Let's change that. It does have a phone number, so there's a problem already. And now it's still gray and it still doesn't do anything. Okay, so don't. Don't change your orientation. We are not allowed to do that. Let's add a phone number in there. And save that. And that's still gray. And that, that is still doing nothing. Okay. Time to debug, I guess. So press that. And it has stopped and says, has phone number true. Uh, that's a great start but then why uh, let's go on there and do this no uh, this no okay uh, I'm stupid All right we need to launch this otherwise it's not gonna work right uh, okay, it has it has everything that it needs, but then why? So color can be null. So what if I do that? It should be red. It is red. So it has a phone number, it's red. And now I press on that and it doesn't work. Great, everything is uh, wonderful. Okay, I press on the icon and I can get to the phone app. But then why? When it doesn't have a phone number, oh, or it's maybe it's the um, the theme. Uh, it's it probably probably doesn't update that. Why? Oh. Nah, I think I need to get some sleep. So if we have a phone number, then we draw that in red. And if we don't, we're going to 
draw that in green, which is completely opposite than what one would expect. So let's do that properly. If we have a phone number, we display the green uh, phone. And if we don't have a phone number, we should be able to display a red phone. Okay, so it says it says here that it's red, which means we don't have a phone number. That's true. Let's add a phone number. So now it's green. Okay, I think I'm, I'm I might actually leave it like that, but eh, I don't know. Stop changing your orientation. You foolish phone. Um. Do -do -do -do. Let me check something. Quickly. Yes, that's what I thought. My chat is not working. Haha. <laughs> I see people in the chat. I see people. Oh, I, 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 I think I'm an idiot because I have two chats window. There we go. I had the wrong window opened on my OBS. So I am sorry, everyone. I am going to bring the chat here and I'm going to say hello to people in the chat. Hello, hello, ProGamer. Hello, Agdir. Hello, Kawin Nelson. How can I, should I call you? Nelson or Kawin or Kawin Nelson? I don't know, let me know in the chat. I, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong chat window in my OBS setup. So, you have said a lot of stuff in the chat. I am sorry I didn't read that. So, what do we have? Uh, we have a hi, hello, hello, Agdir. So, Carwin Nelson or Carwin or Nelson, whatever, let me know. What is this? What is this application? Yes, that's true. I should, now that I see that, I are, that there's people in the chat, I should uh, go over the, uh, the app once again. So, this app, in case you guys are still there, uh, this app is um, an app that I'm going to, that I'm writing for the same person that asked me for the um, uh, Expense for Two app. So this app is going to help them manage their one person childcare business. So they are taking care of children. They're looking after children after school, uh, between the end of school and the time the parents can come and pick them up. And so she needs to, uh, keep track of the number of hours the child, the children were there. Uh, did they have lunch or not, uh, or dinner? Um, and um, yes, the stuff like that. So right now, I am working on the uh, the form. So all the information uh, that. Um, uh, you need to have about the children. So that's, uh, let me now go back to the uh, Android scene and I'll go back to over a quick tour of the form. Of the form. So we have, uh, it's all in French because my phone is in French, but it's fully translated French and English. Uh, so that's the, the first name, child's first name, child's last name, child birth date. And then we have here uh, something that uh, tells us if this, the child is um, preschool or it's already um, uh, he's already uh, going to school. So that changes some stuff. The price uh, that uh, is going to be invoiced. And then what we added today is this allergies uh, field where we um, we can uh, write everything that the child is as allergic to. Then we've got the parent's name, then we get the address uh, for the parents or that's going to be that's going to be used for the invoice. 
And then the phone number that we added today. And then the miscellaneous uh, information. That could be the name of the doctor or some more specific stuff. Like, uh, I don't know if uh, the child has something he or oh, they actually uh, uh, can't eat, for example. Because uh, I know uh, my client has a child that doesn't eat meat. So she wants to add that here. And so the last thing we were working on was this phone icon that is green when we have a phone number and we can press that and it starts the phone app. And when we don't have a phone number, it's going to be red and we can click on that it does and nothing happens. Now, it seems to me that the icon is not centered. Oh yes, it is. So it was just uh, me being silly. And so with that, I think, I think with that I have uh, corrected um, everything. I've been uh, every every issue I, uh, I was uh, aware of. Uh, there's still one thing that I will only be able to test on iPhone once I publish another version of the app on the on test flight and that's on the iPhone apparently we are not able to select in the middle of a word and then change that but we'll see that when I push another version on on test flight all right so I am sorry I missed the flight uh, the flight the chat I'm going to actually I'm going to remove this one. So let me go to my OBS setup on the docs, custom brother brothers doc, and I'm going to trash the this chat here. Alright, and now I just can't make any mistakes because this is the only chat I have in my OBS setup. So really, really, really sorry about that. The uh, let me bring the chat back. The Android manifest should be at my project Android app. All right, let's go. Uh, I don't think we need that. It's, I think it 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 works. Flutter will do that for me. But Android uh, app SRC and you don't see the the screen right now, but you can see the chat. So I'm following that. Uh, main and then Android manifest there it is and let's go back to the main screen and uh, I don't know if there's everything I need in there but you know what I'm not gonna mess with that I'm going to assume that Flutter does everything because that's what it did for the uh, iOS app when I published the oh it's it, the, the Let's turn again. Um, when I published the iOS app, I didn't have to do anything, and everything was taken care of by Flutter, and the app just went through every everything um, Apple put in, you know, between you and the App Store. So, so that's great. Now, I I wonder, should I put the phone number on the front page? On the front page. No, I don't think so. But what I'm going to, to do then is that I'm going to reduce the eight, eight of the of the tile of the list tile. So let's go to list tile. There we go. And. And that list tile is is three lines. I'm going to leave the property in here, but set it false, which is exactly the same as not having the property. And uh, that will be enough because if if we go there and change that and go to the allergies uh, thing, we can. Uh, ah, we can't. What kind of keyboard did I 
put in the... Oh, it's turned again. How can I prevent that from happening? I need to get... Uh, I need to look at this Android phone and prevent it from going landscape. Um, yes, so allergies, it's in the form, it's in the folder form, and it's just below there, up there. But allergies, and I don't have any keyboard type in here. And I wanted to have the same thing as the address, so... Oh... Well, I think I've removed everything from the address. Ah, max lines. I need to set max lines. At least two lines. In the allergies field. Here. So that I can... Edit that, and then I can go back, go to the next line. And if I do that and save and go back to the main screen, we can see the all the lines are here. Okay, that's cool. That is cool. However, it presents me with a two-line screen. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I can live with that. I can live with that. Well, that's it. That's it. We have the phone number, we have the allergies, we have the phone number, uh, phone number, I already told that, the, we have the um, MISC, uh, MISC informations and we have also the keyboard that goes um, automatically into caps mode at the beginning of a sentence. So Alice in Wonderland, okay, and dot and then the next word is capitalized. Great, that's what I wanted. And also we fixed the the bug here that uh, that we we, we were not uh, able to keep to retain this value here. Now there's only there's one more thing I want to check. This. Please select an option. Okay. Please select an option hasn't been translated. Uh Please select an option. That should be i18n.t of please select an option. And that will make that a, a, a message, uh, a, a translated message. I need to hot reload this and go to my files and open the translation files where are they where are they not here they are not here either where are they uh, they should be uh, not in lib no uh, indeed not in lib in assets assets and um, I don't have that so I need to add that Please select an option. Okay, that's the template. We add that to the English file translation, and though we don't translate anything. And then we have here, veuillez choisir une option. And by the magic of the hot reload, we should see that in French, which is great, although Can I see that only when I when I validate the form? Because why do I see that now? The validator valid validated. Yes, that's what validators do, don't they? 
Um, but why did it validate that? Why did it validate that? I don't know. Let's uh, print stuff. And let's see our debugging console. Yeah, it says validation. Why? Why is it validating this one? And this one. Validating first name. No, it just but it, it is just validating my custom my custom thing. But then if I try to save uh here then it validated the it validated the uh, first name so i'm probably not doing what i should be doing in my custom pingy so if state has error then i I do that. What's that? That is children of the column. If the state of zero. But the thing is, why did it validate the field? Why, why, why? Uh, unpressed. Well, I'm going to have a look at that off stream because that's not really interesting to do on stream. But I have that. Okay, I need to. I also need to change that. Uh, it's not aligned properly. Uh, form, 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 form folder. Uh, and it's not aligned properly because 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 it's a, it's inside a column and it should be and then there's the expanded and there's the syro and then there's the second one and so that's that's the second child of text Do we have an alignment something text align and we want to, that to be a little Text align horizontal. Text align left, actually. Text align text align right. No, I want that to be on the left because that's not going to help. That's not helping at all. Text align, left, right, center, justify, start. Is it helping? It's not helping. It's not because it's probably not expanded. So let's wrap that inside an expanded widget. Expanded and see if that changes. It does change because now it crashes. Great. Great. Everything is going smoothly. Uh, I don't know how to do that, actually. Expand text in column. Oh, uh, column, we only specify children here. We need to add a, the, so it's a cross axis alignment, cross axis alignment dot start. 
I think that will do it. It did. It did. But if I go and save that... Uh, it seems to me like... The font is a big, a little bit too big, and also it would need a four pixel of four DP display pixel. I think it, uh, they call that uh, separation. So it's a sized box. So that would be, huh? Uh, or what does the text take the text line stretch style? Uh, it doesn't, it does a style, it does a style. So that's what I want. Oh, it's already there, that's why. Um, and that probably has a property for margin or padding or something, huh? A border. Huh, no it doesn't. So I'm I'm confused. I'm confused. Textile uh hey, leading local foreground, background, shadows, font feature, decoration. Debug label. Decoration uh well I'm I'm, I'm going to go with the uh, the easy way. So this is going to be a column, a column, and the column is going to have children. What? What's wrong with having children? And then that's going to be a text, and that's the end of the column. Yes. And so that should still be working the same as before. And I'm going to add a sized box with an 8 of 4 and see what that does. That's better. That's better. Is it? Uh... Let's try 8 and see what that, what's that? What that is doing, it's it looks a lot better. However, I am pretty sure it's too big. I am pretty sure it's too big. So let's go and add a const here. Yes, there we go. And and Hmm. Okay. How can I do that? I need to figure out what font is used in the text box. Font weight or some load of face face set. Font or some Okay, let's uh, let's ask our friend Google. Flutter text font size size. It's in the text style apparently. Font size. Font size factor. Okay, so that's gonna be here. Oh, it's in this style, yes. Font size. Font size. Default textile of context. Dot style dot apply. Font size factors 2.0. Maybe we've got something in the scheme. In the theme. But theme texts. We've got a text theme. Uh, 
Mm, probably not. Probably not, but... Hmm. Well, let's do that. Let's copy and paste that. It's a default, default text style of context. Okay. That style that apply and it it is not happy because the default type text style cannot be assigned to parameter double. Yeah. But I can do that. But I don't have the context. Well, guess what? I'm going to leave it like that for now. It's red. It's it's there, but it shouldn't be there. But um, I'm going to try and fix that. And it's a little bit too big. And I think if I find out how it's done with the uh, text field, then I should be able to mimic that for this field and only display this message when the form is saved and not every time. So that's uh, pretty much uh, all the things I wanted to do right now on stream. I may do another stream later tonight, although right now my dog is looking at me like uh, like she's going to jump on me because, uh, well, it's time for her to go on a walk. So let's bring the webcam uh, view back on. Thank you, everyone who joined the chat. I am sorry I missed it. I, I will do better next time, I promise. Thank you, everyone watching this after the fact. This has been recorded on October the 2nd um on twitch so follow the links uh, here there you go that's the youtube one and the twitch one is going to uh, appear i think um follow uh, like whatever i'm trying to reach uh 50 followers you can see that uh down here where is it it's somewhere here there we go right now we are at 43 out of the 50 uh, needed to get affiliate. I already have the um, hours. I already have the average uh, chat people, but I need uh, a few more followers. So if you know someone that might be interested by this content, um, send them my way. Um, I think I'm going to try and find someone to read, even though we are not uh, very... Uh, there's not a lot of people in the chat right now. Let me find a live stream that I follow. And I might be interested in in raiding. Who do we have? Okay, we've got Anthony. Yes. So we're going to raid Anthony. Uh, I am I am one, but <laughs> who knows? Uh, Anthony, you should follow Anthony Wright's code. He's a great guy. Anthony Wright's code. Yes, that's it. So let's uh, let's start the raid, and I will see you soon. Thank you for following. Bye bye.